everybody. Uh, just finished The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. And I figure I'll just give you all my book review and tell you about my experience reading it. Um, but first, let me assure you that I really do want to believe the truth as much as y'all, if not more. And I take the threat of hell very, very seriously. I mean, that's what got me motivated to investigate the truth because I figured, you know, as a Christian, I had assumed Muslims were going to burn in hell, so, you know, look at the mirror and think, that's a serious threat, eternal damnation, so we have to be very careful that we're believing the truth, so, I'm sure y'all are just going to say that I didn't really care and I already had preconceptions, but I really did honestly try to be open-minded and to seek the truth. Having said that, I encountered tons of logical fallacies, so... Let me just go through the biggest ones and uh, <laughs> let y'all know what I thought. So, the first one is evidence for Jesus' existence is not the same as evidence for Jesus' divinity. Those are wildly different. And evidence for the historical accuracy of the Bible is not the same as evidence for the divine inspiration of the Bible. Those are very, very different claims, and they require very different amounts of evidence. It's, you don't need that much evidence to say a man existed, but to say he's God, you would need a mountain of evidence. And you can say that a book has some accurate historical facts in it, but that doesn't mean it's the Word of God. That requires much higher threshold for belief and a single contradiction disproves biblical inerrancy and the Bible's not all true can't be the word of God unless God can make mistakes so second the burden of proof rests on believers if you believe something and you want to convince other people that that belief is true it's up to you to provide evidence I don't have to explain anything. I'm in a position of ignorance. I'm not making any claims. I don't have to disprove anything. It's up to people who believe something to give good evidence why I should leave my position of ignorance and move either to uh, making a claim or making the counterclaim. Three, the argument from authority is not effective. I don't care what degrees you have. I don't care how many books you've written or how many years you've spent studying the Bible. None of that is relevant. All that matters is the evidence and your reasons. And a bum on the street, if he brings me good evidence and a good reason, I'll believe him just as quickly as I'll believe some theologian. <laughs> Probably believe him quicker, but just your credentials don't matter. <laughs> Um, and four, eyewitness testimony is unreliable. Even if you know someone's honest and you know that the event they're talking about just took place, they will make mistakes recounting the story. That's just human nature. It's hard to know things about the universe. Our senses are fallible. The, our memories are terrible. And we have all these cognitive biases that just make it really, really hard to figure out the truth. So, someone telling you a story does not make it true. Um, I guess those are my main criticisms, but... In, okay, so given all that stuff, I'm still willing to admit that I could be completely wrong. The Bible might be divinely inspired. Jesus might be the Son of God. I'm not convinced yet, but I don't, okay, I want to do this thing where, you know, you pray and ask for God to, you know, guide you down the right path, but I'm scared if I do it on camera, y'all are going to think I'm patronizing you, but I honestly do want to know the truth, and I don't want to burn for eternity, so... Just believe me that after this video, I'm going to 
honestly pray to God and ask Him. If I'm on the wrong path, please correct me. Please show me the way back to the truth. Um, because even more than myself, I don't want to lead others astray. I don't want to be leading people into hell. Um, but at this point, I'm convinced that almost everyone is wrong. So that's that's how I help people is to help them see how they're wrong. But like I said, I don't want to lead anybody into hell. So I really, after this video ends, I'm going to try my best to honestly pray and ask for God to... I mean, this isn't the first time when I was first beginning to doubt my faith. I prayed like every night to please <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to be wrong, but <laughs> over the years I've just become more convinced that the evidence for the Bible and for Jesus is not good enough. Um, so... That's it, I guess. Uh, let me know what y'all are thinking. I don't know how y'all are going to respond to this series of videos, but I did my best, and uh, I really want to know what y'all think. So please uh, get back at me in the comments. All right, I'll talk to y'all later.